Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we invite you into our presence, wherever we are, participating in Know Your Feet. We thank you for being able to host this series to inform about and spread the Catholic faith to our sisters and brothers. We ask your blessings on our presenters, our listeners, those who facilitate this production, that we may be guided by your Holy Spirit in presenting and receiving your word. We pray that all who benefit may come to a deeper understanding and appreciation of the Catholic faith that will guide our living. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son and our brother. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good day, viewers. Happy New Year to all from the collaborators of Know Your Faith, Office of Pastoral Planning and Development, Credi and Camsel. I am Gary Tegeli of the Office of Pastoral Planning and Development, and we warmly welcome you back to Know Your Faith, those of you joining us for the first time, and we want to encourage you to invite others, your friends, your family, those abroad, to join Know Your Faith. This production will continue from now until February 27th. Then we go uh, on a break and return after Easter, and we will go straight on to November, save and accept the month of August. We are adopting a, adopting a new format. Instead of one hour pro, a, a one-hour program, we will be doing a half-hour program divided into two sessions. We hope to capture as much content because now we will extend the, the number of programs for each series. In this series, we are focusing on the Archdiocesan theme arising from the Synodal Conversations in 2022. And that theme is Building Community, Inclusivity, and Dialogue. And we would explore the biblical perspectives with Father Eliezer Molimba, the Trinitarian view of community by Father Jason Boatson and St. Paul's discourses on community, inclusivity, and dialogue by Father Jason Boot, uh, Father Steve Ransom. This series will be facilitated or moderated by Mr. Nyron Rollinson. And Nyron is a, an attorney at law and a religious educator teaching secondary school students at St. Mary's College, Port of Spain, since 2018. He is a graduate of the Seminary of St. John Vianney, Uganda Martyrs Theological Institute and UWI, where he studied theology and communication studies. And Nyron has a lot of experience working with young people in the Archdiocese as a catechist and a, as a mentor. We are very grateful to have Nyron once again moderating for us and we welcome him. He serves in the lady in the parish of the La Our Lady of All Nations in Derby. He's married with one son. Welcome, Nairon. Thank you, Gary, for that warm welcome. Welcome, viewers. A special welcome to those of you joining us internationally, regionally, on TV, and on social media. Our special guest presenter today, well, this evening, is no stranger to our Know Your Faith series. He is Father Eliaza Mulemba, and the topic that he will be presenting to us is Building Community, Inclusivity, and Dialogue, Biblical Perspectives of Old Testament Approaches and New Testament Approaches. In this particular session, we will be looking at the Old Testament Approaches, and in our second session, we will be looking at the New Testament Approaches. So there's give you a, a short biography of who Father Elias is. He is a member of the Holy Ghost Fathers, otherwise known as the Spiritans. He hails from Malawi, a country in the southeast um, tip of the African co continent. 
He was ordained a priest on the 2nd of October, 2021, and he was then appointed as a missionary to Trinidad and is currently serving in Lavantel Mova pastoral area. Welcome, Father Eliezer, and if you could take it from here right away. Thank you very much, and greetings to everybody following us and uh, watching and following with us this time. Building community, inclusivity, and dialogue is a call that is not strange to the biblical foundation, to the scriptures. It is a call and an effort that is not foreign to the Bible. That is why there is a biblical foundation to building community, inclusivity, and dialogue. That is why we can talk about the Old and the New Testament approaches uh, to building community, inclusivity, and dialogue. This call, especially when we consider the, uh, the Old Testament or the First Testament, we look at the people of Israel in their relationship with God. And also we look at the role of the prophets. When we look at these two, we, find, we discover how in the relationship between God and God's people, how community was built, how inclusivity was seriously considered, and how dialogue runs through all the books of the Old Testament. And when we look at how this building community and how consideration of inclusivity and dialogue are really at play, from the onset in the Old Testament, we look at a language of inclusivity from the perspective of God, God in his relationship to creation, what God created. So from the onset, we get the proper context to talk about building community, to talk about inclusivity, to talk about dialogue. And here I am talking about the language, the, 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 the Old Testament the first book of the Old Testament gives us the language of inclusivity, that we can be able to, dis to have a discourse on building community, inclusivity, and dialogue in the Bible because of this language. And the language is let us. When we carry through our Bibles, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, we find there the language of inclusivity when it says, then God said, and now let us make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. That is the context and the language of inclusivity that we are talking about. Let us, our, we will, we want to adopt this language, this language of inclusivity in order to talk about building community inclusivity and dialogue. So any effort to build community, inclusivity and dialogue should really and truly adopt and incarnate this language. Let us, we will, our, because this sets the tone in the Old Testament style of building community, inclusivity and dialogue. And that style in the Old Testament is communication. God kept constant communication with what God created. So we just looked at God uh, using the language of inclusivity, let us. And now God kept constant communication with what God created. And this constant communication runs through all the books of the prophets, of the Old Testament, but most especially in the books of the, the prophets. In the books of the prophets, they they played a great and crucial role in the constant communication between God and God's people. At times through the prophets, God could actually call the people into dialogue, call the people that he created, the creation that he has into dialogue. For example, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, God said, come now and let us reason together. So this is an invitation to, to God's people, come now and let us reason 
together. So we see that these give us a, a proper perspective in talking about uh, building community inclusivity and dialogue. And here is a willingness to be able to communicate. So communication runs through all the books. In fact, one would want to call the whole First Testament as a book, a book, a library of communication between God and God's people. God, God communicating with the people through the prophets, the people also communicating with God through the prophets. And in that style of communication, there's a lot that is going on because through communication, Israel is built up as a community. Through communication, we find that um, the history is being shaped, the, is, is, the Israelite history is being shaped shaped and taking form through communication. Through communication also, uh, the people are able to make peace with one another, with the neighboring countries or the neighboring uh, nations. And so communication really and truly guides all the relationship that Israel has with God, with each other in the community, and also uh, the, the, the relationship between Israel and the neighboring countries. So communication here is a key. First of all, it is God communicating God's self to the people and the people also communicating to God. Communication with God developed a, a strong sense of being a people that is belonging to one God. This gave them a sense of identity, the, the Israelites. Identifying themselves with this one God formed them into a community with laws stipulating how they were to relate with God and with one another. For instance, through the prophet Moses, we see that uh, uh, God communicated the Ten Commandments, as we find in Exodus chapter 21 to 17, and also in Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 to 21. The, through the prophecy, the prophetic role of Moses, God communicated 10 commandments to the Israel, to the people. These, these, roles, uh, these laws enabled Israel to be a community because it's only a community when it has a sense of rules and regulations, what to do, what not to do, how to treasure the, um, the, the relationship that is there, how to treasure what God has done and the tradition. So we find that it is communication through the prophecy, uh, prophetic role of Moses that built up Israel as a community. So the point is communication in the Old Testament style, communication builds community. It can do the same to us today. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for that very, those thought provoking themes you were able to bring out from, from the Old Testament. And uh, you know, the, the whole idea of inclusivity as God making us in his own image, using let us as a, um, an important expression, and that constant communication we see through the Old Testament. Now, when we are inspired by these Old Testament approaches, how can we best concretely improve communication as a community, and especially when we want to build up a community? And how can we... Um, do that in our church communities? And if so, can you provide some concrete examples for us to, to appreciate that? All right. Thank you very much. Um, it is important indeed that as we are inspired by this approach of the Old Testament, we look at how best can we improve or build up communication in order to build our own community. Now, in, in, our, in our, our life and experience as a church, we have a lot of means of communication that we, we do. To talk about communication nowadays, like in the church and in the society, may seem a little simple. It may seem easy, as we say, what Father is talking about here. We always communicate. We have WhatsApp, plenty of WhatsApp groups that we can share information easily. We do have um, not notices in the church. We communicate what's going to happen in the, in the next couple of weeks if there's a retreat and all this we do have so what is he really talking about that we we communication can build community 
But what we miss probably in these uh, means of communication is two things. First, I will say that it is communication is much more effective when it is personal communication. You see that letters there is a personal and communal communication. And then communication is effective if also all people are considered uh, in that communication process. For example, yes, we may have all these media means by which we can pass on message, we can communicate, but do we really reach out to all the people, all, and it means all, and this is the language of inclusivity, all people who may not be very conversant with, for example, WhatsApp. And, uh, well, some people actually are put off by the fact that if if a message is too long, for example, and it hides some content, it say, read, <laughs> read again, read through. Some people are put off by that. So how do we cater for that? So you see, we may be at communication, but we may not really be at it deeply because we are not considering all the other things. So how do we reach out still to those who don't like too much content? How do we reach out to them? So we are, we, we are thinking of as a community, we can build community when we think about those who may not be conversant with the means of communication that we are using. And we are also thinking of reaching out uh, to persons who may not be conversant with our language and our style of communication. That is why I said that let us give us a tone. So there are people who may not be conversant with our language of communication. How do we reach out to them? So these are the two things to consider. It has to be personal. Nowadays, in the, in the, in the times past, a bell could bring out, or a chime, or a bell could bring out people all together. That was a very effective means of communication. It was personal because you hear the bell, you know Angela's time. So we gather and we pray the Angela's. You hear the bell, you know church time. Nowadays, we have these means of communication, but it's no longer personal because in front is, are the means, are the media, the phone and the things, but these are not personal. It, 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 we, we are drifting far and far away from a personal touch of communication. So I would think we will look into those lines in, in terms of uh, improving our communication today. Thanks for that, Father. I was just trying to, you know, imagine for modern times an actual tool bell or something like that to call us together. But <laughs> but now I guess we have to just settle for WhatsApp call. Anyway, we have to continue in our um, second segment for Old Testament Approaches. So I'll leave you to take it from here. Thank you. Thank you. As we are talking about communication, uh, communication between God and the people, but also we look at communication with each other, the communication among persons in the community. Communication with each other created a certain a, a, a sense of relationship. So it created relationships in the among the people in the Old Testament, relationships. In the Old Testament approach, it is a communication that translates actually into relationship. And it is a relationship that built up Israel as a people, as a community where a sense of belonging could be felt by every member of the community. So every effort indeed to be an inclusive church must inculcate this Old Testament style, the style of communication with each other and, and, and building communication with God. And in this, what is at play? What are communi community builders when we look at communication and the role of the prophets? Now we'll, we'll focus more on the role of the prophets. What are the community builders? Communication is one, ownership is one, a sense of ownership and union is another. So, three community builders to this extent that we have communication is a community builder ownership a sense of ownership is a community builder and union is a community builder with the important role played by the prophets in the communication between god and god's people are the relationship became more and more personal as we have had that discussion there this personal relationship developed into a sense of owning up to one another. 
God owned the people and the people owned God. And also the people owned one another in an intimate union. When we read Isaiah chapter 43, verse 3, we hear, For I am the Lord your God, the holy God of Israel. Here is God identifying God's self in, in a sense of being the people's God. That is the sense of ownership that is there, that we see there. And in response, what, 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 what comes out of the people? Um, the same prophecy of Isaiah chapter 44, verse 5, we find that the prophet says, one by one, people will say, I am the Lord's. And even nations, other nations, uh, people from other nations, not from Israel, will also say, we belong to Israel's God. So that is also a sense of ownership. So here is God owning up the people, and here are the people owning God. And because of that sense of ownership, because of that space of ownership, it is even extended to other people from the neighboring nations to identify themselves also with the Israel's God. This is what, that's why we are saying ownership is a community builder. In this style, community was built, inclusivity considered, and the dialogue entered into so easily in the Old Testament approach. And building community life as one, um, one of the founders of the Holy Ghost Fathers, uh, Francis Lieberman, caused this, this kind of union, he calls it a union of minds and hearts. This is what is happening there where God says, um, I am your God, the Lord your God, and Israel is my people. And they, where the people say, I am the Lord, I belong to the Lord, we belong to the Lord. This kind of union, Francis Lieberman calls a union of minds and hearts. And building community life is possible with such union of minds and hearts and a sense of ownership. It enables us indeed to say in a concrete way that this is our church. This is our parish. This is our archdiocese and so on and so on in a more personal way. I find that 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 gives a that is a community builder and inclusivity builder because of that sense of ownership. If we could own up to one another and own up to God, so our parish it means that every member of that parish uh, then is is my companion, my partner, my real relation, my real concretely, my real sister, my real brother. That gives a, a certain, that is a community builder because it gives us a sense of ownership that we, we definitely need in our efforts to build community inclusivity and dialogue. These community builders, the, the other community builder that we find in the Old Testament style is consultation. And this is where the prophets play a great role because every, everything that the people experience in their life as a people belonging to God, everything that they are experiencing, they communicate it to God and God communicates also what he wants, the direction he wants his people to go through the prophets. And in a style of consultation, so we have talked about ownership, we have talked about communication, we have talked about union as community builders. And now the, the, the fourth one is, is consultation. You see, every time that people experience something, they will want to consult the prophets in order to hear what is God saying about our situation. In the, old, in the very uh, second book of the Old Testament, the people could go to, to Moses. What is, you, you remember the whole process of the desert, um, the wilderness. What is God saying about our situation? 
look at these snakes biting us and look at the hunger, look at this. So in a in a style of consultation, then God could come up and communicate with them. And that style brought people together because they have a common enemy, they have a common goal to achieve. So in a style of consultation, that's why the prophets played a great role because they would be uh, the means of consultation. What is God telling us in this situation? If we are to build community, inclusivity and dialogue, we we'll need to discern together in a style of consultation. Call each other together, not only don't call uh, religious leaders together when we are experiencing some huge national crisis and then we say, let's come together for prayer. But for anything, that consultation is needed because we'll need to call each other. Let's discern together what is God telling us we should do for our society, for our church in this time. So ownership, union, commun communication, and this sense of consultation are community builders in the Old Testament style. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Father Elias, again, right. So, a lot of a lot of food for thought you you give us there. A lot a lot to, to chew on. Um, I can't help but um, go back to your your image of the the prophet. Uh, when you presented the role of the prophets in the Old Testament, um, you what do we have to work on in our particular communities here? Um, in order to build community inclusivity and dialogue, what is the prophetic role? Or what, what does that look like today? And what, and in our specific context, what, what, who are the prophets of our who are, who are walking among us? And and what, what do, what do we have to do? What should be our disposition in in receiving their message? All right, thank you so much. Indeed, there is a prophetic role to be played just as it was significant in the Old Testament approach that the prophets were the means of um, that finding solutions to building community inclusivity and dialogue. Today we can ask the same question. It, it will be very relevant to say, in the first place, do we really have prophets today? So it, I, I'm sure this is a relevant question to ask. And the answer is yes, we do have prophets. We remember that at our baptism, we become priest, king, and prophet. And we may do well the priestly um, responsibility, the kingly responsibility. We know we belong to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But then what about the prophetic uh, ministry that we, we get, we are empowered with at our baptism? So we have a prophetic role to play, and all of us, in this together are prophets. We are not looking at, and that is that is an exclusive approach, which is which is wrong. We're not looking at religious leaders. We're not looking at priests, uh, bishops, and uh, church leaders, church coordinators alone as prophets of our time. We're looking at every baptized person is a prophet and has to exercise their prophetic role in the parish in the small Christian communities, in the society, we have to exercise the prophetic role. And just to give some examples, um, in, 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 in our exercising of our, our prophetic role, one thing we should consider is reading the signs of the times. So the people in a style of consultation in the Old Testament approach could approach the prophets and discern, as a people they discern together, what is God call, calling us to do, or what? Why is what is happening happening to us? In the same manner, today we need to to come together and say, what what does what is happening mean for us for our society? That is what I'm calling reading the signs of the times, and also that that calls for a certain sense sensitivity to what's happening around us. That sensitivity. Is, is a duty and a responsibility of each and every one of us, not just uh, the priest. Because nowadays the temptation is to say, well, if something is not going okay in the parish, is, it, is the priest, he's the leader, isn't it? So we are quick to identify priests as a prophet, um, forgetting that all of us have been empowered 
to be prophets. So the the best way to exercise our prophetic role is that one. Read the signs of the times. Be sensitive to what's happening around mm -hmm. with my neighbor, what's happening uh, with my fellow parishioner. When, when, when I come to church, it's not just uh, me, mass, communion, and go home. No, no, no. You can also come when you sit next to somebody and um, apart from greet, simply greeting them morning, or you can also go engage into a, a, a kind of conversation and dialogue. In that sense, you will be exercising your prophetic role. You will engage them and even find out what's, what's wrong with them. Sometimes we never know. We do have uh, similar problems. You know, it, it suffices to know that I am not alone going through this. You know, that's how we, we become prophets to one another. Just let someone know that you are not alone in this and that I care too. I am happy to worship with you. So don't stick only to our families. There's a temptation nowadays. You come to church, we sit only same place and the same people. All the time we interact with the same people and you become so used to them. Maybe it's family. You see the whole seat there, the whole bench there in the church is composed of family alone. And these are prophets. Prophets are supposed to mingle with everybody, not, not considering family alone or blood or marriage relations alone. But as prophets come and interact with the people who are different to you, the people who, who may not worship the same way you worship, may not share the same joy. So let's mingle and interact. Uh, meet and greet is not only when we go to a fete. When also we come to church, it's meet and greet and introduce oneself be open to communicate oneself. Thank you for that, Father. And I think, um, honestly, that is some serious, that's a serious radical challenge for us in church in Trinidad because I I know we are so prone to, to look to the priest for answers. So very, I'm, I'm glad you were able to bring out that new prophetic outlook for us and, and to challenge us going forward. All right, so just um, very quickly, if you could just close with us, uh, close us in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, we thank you for the opportunity to have a discourse in building community, inclusivity, and dialogue. Lord, we know that if you do not build the house, we as laborers will do, but in vain. We do not want to labor in vain. Come to our aid in our mm -hmm. efforts to build community, inclusivity, and dialogue through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. So please join us for part two of Building Community, Inclusivity, and Dialogue, Biblical Perspectives. The next time we will be looking at New Testament approaches. Thank you for joining us.